this planet who can live each day without being, being affected by something. Apple Chairman Steve Jobs. Oh. How we work, how we play, how we shop, how we communicate have all been made better and decidedly more elegant by this extraordinary innovator. A lot of times, said Steve Jobs, people don't know what they want until you show it to them. Steve did just that for 30 years, donning his trademark black turtleneck and worn blue jeans to become the world's best-known master of innovation. In 1976, Steve, along with Steve Wozniak and Ronald Wayne, formed Apple Computer Company in Steve's Paris garage. Eventually, a former Intel executive lent them $250,000 and they set up offices in Cupertino, and I can get the weather for that place any time of my life. <laughs> the next year, they debuted the Apple II, which became a runaway hit. By 1983, the company had joined the Fortune 500 faster than any corporation in history. A visit to Xerox Park Research Center in 1979 exposed him to a new technology, a graphical user interface driven by a mouse-controlled pointer. He saw the instant appeal of the concept, which led to the release of the Macintosh in 1984. In 1985, a power struggle led to Steve leaving Apple. The next year, Lucasfilm Limited's computer graphics division spun off its graphics group, which became Pixar Incorporated. With a $10 million investment, Steve became Pixar's primary investor and eventually its chief executive. The company spent the next several years developing cutting-edge rendering hardware and waiting for technology to progress to the point where computer-generated feature films would be feasible, which eventually resulted in 1995's Toy Story. Steve was credited as the film's executive producer. Disney has consulted on and distributed all Pixar features ever since and acquired the company in 2006. Steve returned to Apple in 1996, became CEO in 2000. When the Walt Disney Company acquired Pixar in 2006, Steve became the company's largest shareholder overnight, joining the board of directors in 2006. He remained a valuable advisor in the years that followed. Steve Jobs passed away on October 5, 2011, after a long battle with pancreatic cancer. And this particular award is rather personal to me because Steve was a dear friend of mine, and I'd give anything to be presenting this to him in person today. We all know that the world lost something extraordinary and irreplaceable when we lost Steve. He was a visionary who was never content with the status quo. He was always looking for the next big idea that would open up new doors and lead us all down new paths. He was a genius in the purest sense of the word, one who defined a generation and changed the world, and whose ideas continue to influence the way we think and the way we live. He was brilliant and passionate and challenging because he wanted us all to think bigger and to move faster and to be better than even our previous best. He was actually one of the first people that I called when I found out that I was going to be Disney's next CEO. I called my family first and then I called Steve, even though I really didn't know him that well. If you remember, we were at a critical crossroads at the time, and I wanted to make sure we took the right path. And animation, as I said yesterday, has always been the heart and soul of Disney, and for that to remain true, I felt we needed Pixar to be part of our future. And I will always be grateful. Steve was open to the idea of Disney and Pixar moving forward together. It was the beginning of the extraordinary creative resurgence we're now seeing across all of Disney animation, and it was also the beginning of a great friendship. That first call actually started an ongoing conversation that continued until the very end of Steve's life. And I've always appreciated his honesty, even when it was brutal at times. And I admired his integrity and relentless pursuit of excellence in all things. For six years, he was a true Disney champion, trusted advisor, and a great sounding board. He was a valued member of our board who served Disney exceptionally well, and we were lucky to have the benefit of his perspective and wisdom. I was honored to know him. I'm proud of what we achieved together, and I'm 
very happy to know that he was, will always be remembered as an important part of Disney's legacy. He was known for his big ideas and his ability to stay focused on the stuff that really counted. And for him, the thing that always counted most in life was his family. He was a loving husband and a devoted father and a great friend to many. And I know we will all miss him terribly. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Lasseter to accept this award. Pixar was a technology company, and I didn't have a lot to do with Steve. Steve would come in to meetings and stuff, but it was about the technology. And at that time, he was brash. He was that material leader that so many people think he was through the rest of his life. He, he kind of, I think back in those early days, he really did look at every, everybody's job at Apple over the early days of Pixar and the technology. And he kind of figured he could do their job even better than that. But I, the first real meeting I ever had with Steve was we wanted to do a short film. And they asked me to come in, and, and in order for him to, to fund it, he, I had to pitch it to him. So I pitched the short film that, that became and at the end of, at the end of, he looked, and he had, the, the picture up there was pretty much the way he was sitting there, kind of like, with his fingers together, do that a lot, do the thing. And he was looking, not at the drawings on the board that I was pitching. He was staring off into the future. At the end of that meeting, he asked me to do something. And it's the only thing Steve ever asked me to do. He said, John, make it great. Tim Toy went on to win the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film that year. And it was the first. <laughs> it was the first. Academy Award ever given to computer animation. And it changed the course of the company. He, he started looking beyond Pixar as being just a technology company. And he started thinking about animation as its future. And he started 
we we were in we were already doing some uh, technology development with uh, Disney Animation. We became very close with Roy Disney, and he started talking to him about us doing a feature film. And in 1991, we started our first feature film, and it was it became Toy Story. It was, it was based upon that little short film that I first pitched it about toys being alive. And I remember while we were in the middle of it, and through all this, we, Steve and I were getting closer and closer. Um, I lost my brother to AIDS. And Steve became my brother. And we were having dinner one day in the middle of the hardest you know, part of the baking toy store. And he started looking off again in the distance. And he said, you know, John, when, when, we, when I make, made a computer, we make the computers at Apple. So the lifespan of that computer is what? About three years. He said, five years, it's a doorstop. You know, but he said, if you do your job right, what, what you create and what Pixar creates can last forever. released in 1938 that is watched today and will be watched as much off in the future for future generations as Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. And he was right. And I was really moved by that. I mean, to be honest, it was hard enough making the movie and now all of a sudden this whole future thing landed on my shoulders. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but, he also saw the vision of this new technology. Steve, and, and during this time, Steve changed. He got married to his wonderful wife. I mean, he had his children. He became a family man. And, and I think that he saw in the artists of Pixar, he saw that he can't do what, what all those artists did. And, and during this time away from Apple, he, he started recognizing the importance and, and, and the value, all, all the creativity of all the other people around him, how great they can be. And he became this unbelievable leader, leading us, challenging us constantly, constantly challenging us to shoot, to shoot way beyond what we thought we could do. Because he believed in us, and he believed in this, and it was always in the service of what's great for us. And so, I'll never forget this day. It's one of the most special days in our relationship. He was, he came to Pixar special to see me. And then he told me aside, just the two of us in the room. And he said, Apple has asked me to come back as their CEO. He had recently sold his company next to Apple. And he said, I want to ask your permission to do that. Because Pixar is so important to me. But I want to ask your permission. And I was so touched by this. And I asked him, you know, we talked about it. And he said, you know, the reason why I really need to do this is I feel like the world is a better place with Apple in it. And he's right. And he went back to Apple. It's amazing to be around someone who maybe has had an effect on the world once in their life. But to be with someone like Steve, who changed the world many, many times over. And I think this entire planet, you know, is a better place for Steve. 
Steve's family, Lorene and their kids, thank you so much for, for, for adding Steve to the amazing list of Disney Legends. They will cherish, cherish this for the rest of their lives. Thank you very much, and thank you, Steve.